Well, thank you. This is uh, the biggest audience I've had for one of these talks. I'm glad that there's, there's interest in this because I, I think this is um, something that, that a lot of people should be using. Um, so how do we handle HTML markup uh, with Drupal's Migrate API? Um, I know not just with the Migrate API, but in other contexts as well. Um, so the introduction about me, I'm Benji Fisher. I work at Hook42. Um, that's fairly recent. I just started there October 1st. Um, and I'm pleased to say this is the first time that a reveal.js presentation has been given with Hook42 branding. Yay! So we have a nice color scheme in our fonts. And uh, probably the next time a reveal.js presentation is given, we'll have you know logos and stuff. But anyway. Um, on Drupal.org, I'm Benji Fisher. My avatar there is a yellow pig. Um, and so I wear this hat because there are people that I, I know online who might recognize my avatar, who might not recognize my face, but they might connect me with the yellow pig. So um, that's why I wear the hat. There's, there, there's more to the hat story. If you're curious, you can ask me during one of the coffee breaks or something. And on Twitter, I was slow to join, so someone else grabbed Benji Fisher. So I inserted my favorite n number, which is related to the yellow pig, 17, um, to get my Twitter handle. Um, you can follow along with these slides um, at benjifisher.gitlab.io slash slide hyphen dex slash index dot html. Um, and while you're there, if you're curious, you can, or, or not, like not while you're there, but you know, later you, you can re read the, uh, the, the self-referential presentation on how I manage my, my slide decks with, with Markdown and Pandoc and GitLab CI. Um, is anyone still typing in the URL, or can I go on to the next slide? Um, so I'm going to talk about the um, Drupal 8 Migrate API. Uh, this is um, the main tool we use for upgrading Drupal 6, Drupal 6 and 7 sites to Drupal 8. There's still a Drupal 6 site I'm running that I have to migrate. Um, uh, it has other purposes as well. Um, if you have a site in other systems, um, like WordPress is the one that, that comes to mind and you want to move it over to Drupal, the Migrate API is the way to do that. And I've heard people doing very creative things like they have sites written in Fox Pro or something and they need to get them into Drupal 8, the Migrate API is the way to do it. Um, and um, a, a lot of people don't realize how flexible the API is. It can also be used for recurring imports. So if you have some external system that's scheduling your classes or writing your content and you want to import articles or classes um, and you need it to run um, on a regular basis, the Migrate API is your friend. Um, I have a Drupal 7 site that's using the Migrate API um, and importing information every 15 minutes on a cron job. Um, so, um, so a, a lot of people seem to get in the mindset when they're working with the Migrate API that they have to get everything right and then run the migration once and, and, and never touch it again. But it, it's actually um, always been designed since, since the early days of the Migrate API um, to be more flexible than that. And it has been around for a while. Um, I have another talk I've given where I talk a little bit, bit about the the history of, of the Migrate API. Um, but for now, suffice it to say, it's been through a few generations, a few redesigns, um, and it, it is very robust. It is very flexible. Um, so the Migrate API, like Drupal, works best with structured data. So if you have a node with file attachments, that's structured data. If you have a node with taxonomy terms, um, a, a reference to the author, 
um, references to other nodes. Those are all structured data. And that's what Drupal works best with, and that's what the Migrate API works best with. Um, but then there's also unstructured data, um, which in Drupal terms um, is typically the body field, where it's just some, some long formatted text and you know, architects really sort of hate that stuff because it can get so messy and designers hate it because the authors want to put in all, all sorts of formatting that, that makes it not consistent with the rest of the site. Um, but it's something we have to deal with. Um, and, and there are good reasons for using it. Um, sometimes you do need the flexibility to make something bold, to make something else italic. Um, so we, we have to deal with, with unstructured HTML markup. So when you have HTML markup, how do you deal with it? So there are basically two ways. Um, one is using regular expressions, and I'll go into more detail on both of these in the, in the following slides. And, uh, and the more reliable way is, is to do proper HTML parsing. Um, and let's see, I, I, I use the word we at the bottom here. I think I forgot to say who we is. But, um, but the work I'm, I'm talking about is something that I did with um, Marco Viegas while we were both working at Isovera and the client was Pegasystems. Um, so an outline of the talk, the introduction. This is the last slide on the introduction. Um, then I'll talk about parsing HTML with regular expressions. Then I'll talk about parsing HTML with PHP's DOM document class. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the, the Migrate API. Um, and, and specifically, that's the section where I'll talk about uh, what, what Marco and I contributed. Um, talk about some things that we might do in the future, because you know it's never done. There's always more you can do. Um, and, and a little summary or conclusion. So before I dive into the next section, any, any questions? And I, I love it when people interrupt me. I, 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 have, I have not timed this, this talk to, to 45 minutes or something. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to. Can you put the link back up to your slides? Because I missed that. <coughs> OK. You have that. That one. There we go. Yeah. And. Uh, you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned that it can import from external systems. Can, yeah. you, can you mention a couple of obvious ones that, that you worked with? So what have I worked with? Um, so for, for Tufts University, they have some external system that they have all their class information, what, what courses, what sections, um, what, what time, whether registration is open and all that and they, they need to pull in information from that to a Drupal site to display it. Um, what other external systems? Uh, the Drupal 7 site that I mentioned is for the, the Boston chapter of the Appalachian Mountain Club. And so the Appalachian Mountain Club AMC has its own database um, of trips that are given. Um, you know, some trips are bicycle rides, some trips are, are camping expeditions, and some are day hikes. Um, so they have an XML feed, and, uh, and I, I import data from, from that XML feed into the Drupal 7 site. Is that, that good enough? What's that? You don't like, convert WordPress sites or anything like that? Um, I, I've done a little bit of um, migration, that some, some, some sites are in WordPress and they say, oh, we don't like WordPress anymore, we want to change to Drupal. I say that's a great idea. I know not everyone agrees with me, but you know, I have my biases. And, and if that's what you want to do, um, th then yeah, we, we've used the Migrate API to migrate WordPress sites into Drupal 7 or Drupal 8. So, 
parsing HTML with regular expressions. Um, so the idea is you start with some HTML, some long string, and it has markup embedded in it, has HTML tags in it. Um, you use some regular expressions to parse that, and then you can either um, extract particular strings you need from it, or you can modify the whole HTML string and, and, and have a new one. So a very simple example, um, we have the markup, an anchor tag href equals https colon slash slash www.drupal.org, close quote, and then you have Drupal homepage and you close the anchor tag. And suppose you want to extract the URL from that. This is about the simplest example I can give of, of parsing HTML. So here's a fairly simple answer. Um, yeah, and I, I made the text larger even though I know I have to scroll horizontally a little bit here. Um, so assign that string, that HTML string, to a variable called markup. Um, the, re the regular expression starts and ends with a slash. Um, and then it looks for the little ca literal characters, a lesson sign, an A, a space, href equals quote. Um, and then in parentheses is the parts it's going to capture, um, one or more characters that are not a quote. Then it looks for the closing quote and the literal greater than sign. That's what the regular expression does. How many people can read a regular expression like that and see what it does? Ooh, wow. About half the audience. That's uh, a lot of people's eyes glaze over when they look at regular expressions. And, and they, they can, of course, get a lot worse than this. Um, but anyway, um, you define the right regular expression. You use the PHP function preg underscore match. Uh, preg is Perl regular, Perl compatible regular expressions. Um, you give it the regular expression, the markup string, and dollar matches, which is not yet initialized. Um, and after running that function, dollar matches becomes an array, and the first element of that array will be the URL. That's what parsing HTML with reg regular expressions looks like in PHP. So there are some problems with this. Um, and actually, maybe I should have these two slides in, in, in the opposite order. So what are some complications? So at the top, I have the original markup. Um, but HTML, the tag names can be lowercase or uppercase. And if you choose to use capital A rather than lowercase a, it's not going to match the regular expression that I gave on the previous slide. So that's, that's the second. I, I, will. I didn't say there wasn't a way to fix it. I just said that what I showed you so far won't work there. Um, the third line, well, there might not be just an href on the anchor tag. You might have a class equals x slash link, x dash link, or an id attribute, or, or that will also break the regular expression I gave you. Um, you might use single quotes rather than double quotes. That's also legitimate. That will also not work with the regular expression I gave. Um, and what's this last one? Oh, yeah. Suppose there's an escaped quote in the URL. I'm not even sure if that's legal, but if it is, it would break the regular expression I gave because it would stop at the first quote it found. Um, so let me go backwards and, whoops, not backwards, but up. Um, so, so these are describing those various problems. Um, there's one I didn't illustrate. You could have a new line within the HTML element. Um, that's legal, and sometimes you see that. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, as you said, you, 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 can, you can fix each of these problems. Um, but by the time you get to that last one, and you start looking up the RFC to see, oh yeah, by the way, R quotes allowed in, in an HTML string, you should realize that you're asking the wrong question. You're reinventing the wheel here. 
These are solved questions. You should not be doing them every time that you have to parse some HTML. So here is the right answer to the wrong question. Uh, this at least addresses all of the examples that I, I've brought up. Um, as you can see, after the closing slash, I have an I. So as you said, that makes it case insensitive. Um, so that fixes one of the problems. And I capture the single quote or double quote and then use a back reference, yada, yada, yada. And then um, because of some grouping, it's now dollar matches of two rather than dollar matches of one. Say, sorry, say that again. It's dollar matches of two because? Be because of some grouping. Um, if you look up here, I capture the opening double quote or single quote. I capture that and then use it as a back reference. So that's the first matching group, and then the second matching group contains the URL. So, okay. A computer language based on pure gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for the recording, someone in the audience suggested this is a computer language based on gibberish. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, you. Any problems you throw at me, I can fix with regular expressions because I've been using regular expressions for a long time. I'm actually pretty good at them. Just because I can do it doesn't mean I should do it. Um, and if you've never seen this, it, it, it's fun to look at this. It, it's sort of a, a well-known question and answer on Stack Overflow. Some innocent person asked, I need to match all of these opening tags paragraph tag, anchor, href equals foo, but not these, a break tag, and horizontal rule tag. Um, and and, and I, I guess this isn't the full question. He says, can, can someone give me some regular expressions that, that'll work for this? And one of the answers he got, this is the fun part, starts off sort of reasonably, kind of pedantically, but it's reasonable. It says you can't parse HTML or XHTML with regex, because HTML can't be parsed by regex. Regex is not a tool that can be used to correctly parse HTML. Um, and then it sort of goes off the rails. Every time you attempt to parse HTML with regular expressions, the unholy child weeps the blood of virgins, and Russian hackers pwn your web app. What was that? At one point, as, as a joke, I, I, I put in the next slide as if I had been hacked. Um, but, but someone told me that no, uh, that, that, that slide was in bad taste. You know, anyway, um, parsing HTML with the regex summons tainted souls into the realm of the living. Um, and, and also, the, the formatting of the answer is, is amusing. Um, and then there's, there's a horizontal rule, and the answer closes with, have you tried using an XML parser instead? Um, so that brings us um, to the next section, which is the right way to parse HTML using the document object model, the DOM. Um, I guess I, I, I always assume that people know everything that I know until I get to this point. Maybe not everyone knows what the DOM is. The document object model or the DOM is the internal structure that a browser uses to represent the HTML that it's presenting to you. Um, and so we, we should understand, we should parse our HTML the same way the browser does. Um, so at a glance, we start with our HTML, we convert it to um, an object, a PHP object, since I'm, I'm doing programming in PHP, that represents the DOM. Um, and then we extract the strings we need from it, or we um, give a modified version of the HTML string. And this is what it looks like in PHP code. Um, the DOM expansion extension uses GNOME's libxml library behind the scenes, or, or maybe it's libxml2. Um, and you can use XPath. Um, the XPath, I guess, is the XML path language um, to locate the pieces you need. 
Um, so the way it looks in, in PHP is um, you make a new DOM document object. Um, do, DOM document is in the global namespace, so it, in case this is in a, a PHP code in, in another namespace, I, I proceed with a, a backslash. And then you use the load HTML method on your DOM document object, and you pass that uh, whatever string you've got, your markup. Um, yeah, by, by default, the, the, um, the DOM document object expects XML, so if you just load, it assumes you're loading XML. If you load HTML, it assumes you're dealing with HTML. Um, then you create a DOM XPath object, um, initializing it with your, the DOM document object you've created, and you call that XPath. Um, and then um, you can use the query method on the XPath object. And if you look for slash slash A, that's an XPath selector that's going to find all the anchor elements in your HTML. If you use slash slash P, it'll find all the paragraph elements. Um, and what can you do with that? Well, once you've found all of them, you can do a for each loop. And for each of them is an HTML node. You can extract the href attribute using the get attribute method um, and assign that to a variable. And then for this sample code snippet, I just echo them. You could do something else with it. You could modify it. Um, so, you know, anytime you're working with PHP, you have the DOM document class available. Um, you can use it, and then you don't have to worry about all those questions that I had, all those different variants of that, that HTML allows, because it's a solved problem. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you can also use Drupal's HTML utility class. Um, so there's a Drupal component. Um, it's, Drupal backslash component, backslash utility, backslash HTML. So if you use that class, um, there's a, a static public method on it called load. And you can load the, mark, the markup string. And that will give you a DOM document class. Um, and then the, next, the rest of the code would be the same as on the previous slide. You still want to make an XPath object and, um, and then use it the same way. Yeah. In XML, at least, uh, if you're using XPath, it's case, sen case sensitive. Would you have to do two of those, or, or does it know from the HTML that it, it needs to be case insensitive to find all the anchors, for instance? Um, that's a good question. I'll, I'll repeat it for the recording. Um, in XML, um, the tags are case sensitive, and, and so if you're looking, I guess we're really asking about the previous slide. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for slash slash A, do you also have to look for slash slash capital A? Um, I'm pretty sure that when, um, when you're using HTML rather than XML, it, it, it understands that tags are case insensitive and you only need one. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, so here are some simple examples of XPath selectors. Um, the sort of thing you might pass to um, XPath the query method. Slash slash A looks for all anchor elements. Um, uh, slash slash A bracket and then class equals quote external close quote will find anchor elements that have class equals external as, as one of their, their classes. Um, so I think that might still be confused if you have class equals foo space external rather than just external, but it will not be confused if you have other attributes. Um, so you could have an ID attribute or the href attribute before or after the class, and it will correctly select things that have this class. Um, or you could find all list elements with a particular class attached and then find the nested anchor element underneath that list element. Um, so, so these are you know, typical things that we look for when traversing um, the DOM. And um, 
We can also do sort of complicated examples of XPath. So this is actually from uh, a project I was working on uh, a few months ago. One of the nice things about doing work for the Department of Justice is that their websites and their Git repositories are all public. Um, so this was for the Freedom of Information Act website, and um, if, if you look for that on GitHub, or if you, you know, find my slides online and click on it, um, it, it was much longer. It was like 400 characters. So I simplified the tags a little bit. Um, I abbreviated them, so like the bottom one, NEDRC is something like, um, I forget what N stands for, um, X ED is expedited denial, which is spelled out in the actual tag name, um, reason code or something. So something expedited denial reason code. I, I abbreviated it to NEDRC. So you can see the structure of the um, XPath selector. And then I added some white space. So this looks for one tag, ANEDS, and then a child of that, ANED, and then there are several of those children. It selects the one with a particular ID attribute. And the, to find the ID attribute, it climbs up the DOM one more, then goes down to another thing and does something similar, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it can get complicated. But you can have a single XPath selector that does a bunch of up and down traversing of, of, the, um, of, the, up, of the DOM to, to, to find the elements you need. And, and this was for... Um, uh, a, mig a migrate project where we were having people upload an XML file and then using the migrate API to import that to create um, a bunch of paragraphs and, and one horrendously large node um, on the Drupal site. So, so yeah, that, that's another real life example of what the migrate API can be used for. And an example of, of how complicated XPath expressions and how flexible XPath is. Um, so to get output from the DOM document, um, so I, I, I guess on the previous slides I said how you can extract the, the href attributes. Um, if you also work on the, the DOM, DOM document object and modify it, then at the end of your modifications you use the save HTML method, and that returns an HTML string. So that's your modified HTML string. So, so now I'm going to get into um, the work that Marco and I did to make this convenient in the Migrate API. Because, let's face it, people are still using HTML to extract URLs from, from, from markup. Did I say that right? People are still using regular expressions to, to extract um, the URL from, from HTML markup. Why are they doing that when everyone knows it's wrong and, and, they, and we even have this funny answer on Stack Overflow? It's because it's familiar and it's convenient. Maybe yes. faster, too, in certain circumstances, you know, rather than reading everything into memory and doing very oh, okay, process. yes. Um, it, it may be faster, as someone in the audience pointed out. Um, uh, for most of the work I do, I care more about reliability than speed. Um, so, so what we want to do is, is make it convenient to use the reliable DOM parsing of, of the HTML um, in the context of the Migrate API. So let me start off with, with a brief overview of Migrate API um, in Drupal 8. Um, it was largely rewritten to follow a standard ETL paradigm, extract, transform, load. Um, although we, 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 we keep some of the uh, terminology that we've inherited from previous versions of the Migrate API in, in Drupal. So the extract phase, we talk about source plugins, and this is what reads data from the source, which might be an XML file, might be a WordPress database, um, might be CSV file, might be another Drupal site, or Drupal 6 or 7 site, for example. Um, the T or transform phase, we have process plugins. Um, and this is where we transform the data to be what we want it to be. Um, 
And then the last stage is the load phase where typically in Drupal we're creating some entities based on, on the information we've extracted and transformed. Um, and that middle phase, the transform phase, is the right place to handle the HTML processing. Um, and it, it, it's also the richest phase. Like on, on, a, on a given migration, you're going to have one source. Um, and then you're going to have one destination. And the Migrate API already knows about your destination. Um, it knows about Drupal, so it does all the hard work. It, it creates the entities for you. Um, but you could have, for every field that you're creating on a node, you could have a separate step in the process or, or transform phase. And you might apply more than one transformation to a given field. So there's a lot going on there. Um, I do most of my work in the transform phase largely because that's where it can be most reusable. Um, when I create process plugins, I might be able to reuse them on a different project. Um, I know some people focus on the source phase, the extract phase, um, and I feel, yeah, you can do that, but you're not going to be able to reuse that easily on your next project. Although, yeah, maybe if you try, you can. So during the transform phase, we read some HTML string from our source, and then we're going to apply process plugins and get some HTML that we're going to load into the body field of, of our new node, typically. Um, so Marco and I, so far, have created four process plugins. Um, and in the latest version of the Migrate Plus module, they are available. Um, the first one is simply DOM. DOM string replace. DOM migration lookup, and DOM apply styles. Um, and again, as I, as I said, the goal of having these things is, is to make it convenient to use. And in these process plugins, we're managing the DOM documents and, and, and using the parsing. Um, so let me go through each one of them and say what it does. Um, the DOM plugin has two jobs. One is you give it an HTML string, and it hands you back a DOM document object. And the second thing it does is the reverse. You hand it a DOM document object, and it gives you an HTML string. So the typical use is that in the process phase of your Migrate plugin, um, how many people have looked at a YAML file defining the migration? Um, about half the audience. So this is a, a piece of what the configuration for migration looks like. Um, there's a, 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 a source section and a destination section, and sort of logically between them, may or may not actually be between them, but logically it's between them is the process phase. Um, and to, to get the, the body slash value, the, the, the string in the body field, um, I might start with the DOM plugin. I'll use method import. That's how I tell it to convert from string to DOM document, not the other way around, by specifying the method. I, I tell it what the source is. Then there might be a bunch of additional steps where we use the, the other plugins. And at the end, I call the DOM plugin again, this time with method export. That's what tells it to go from object to string. So, so that's that's basic for, for using this method. Um, what does the string replace plugin do? Um, so it, it, it does a, 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 either a string replace or, or, or a PREG string replace, um, but it works on a particular attribute. So why would you want to do that? So one example is that if you're, um, as part of your migration, you're changing your, your Subdomain, for example. What was the example I gave here? Um, yeah, so, so maybe on, on the old site, you have a subdomain documentation.example.com, and the client says, oh, we want to simplify that and make it more friendly and call it help.example.com. So anytime you, you find in your markup um, documentation.example.com, you need to replace that with, with the new 
um, subdomain. So you could do that by looking for all anchor links. So you say xpath is slash slash a. Um, and then you look for the href attribute. And you have a search string and a replace string. So it's similar. There, there's a similar string replace plugin al already part of the Migrate API. Um, and now we do it, but just limiting to a specific attribute of, of a specific tag. Um, the DOM apply styles. This is um, something that, uh, that we needed for Pega. Um, and they said, we, we, we have some external authoring system. I can almost remember what the acronym was. Um, and we're importing articles from this external system and we want it to look like these articles were written on our site. So on our site, we have the WYSIWYG editor. We have um, styles that we can apply in, in the WYSIWYG editor. And we want to apply those styles to these things we're importing. And that's what, what this plugin does. Um, you give it a format, your, your full HTML format. And you say what structure you're looking at for. So, so maybe um, the external system is giving you B tags, or maybe it's giving you strong tags. And you say, whenever I find one of those, I want to replace it and make it look as if it was written with whatever style I've configured in, um, it, in CK Editor. And then the, the really important one, sort of, sort of the motivation for doing all of this, is the migration lookup plugin. So as I said at the beginning, Drupal works best with, with structured content and the Migrate API works with structured content. So if you have entity references on your node and, um, and you have a link to no an entity reference to node slash one, two, three on the old site, well, maybe that node gets transformed into node slash four, five, six on the new site. <laughs> And <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's what that is. Um, and, and the migration API can already handle that for entity references. But if you have links in your text fields to node slash one, two, three, and you want to update them to node slash four, five, six, this is what you need. Um, and so it, it, it's actually extending the DOM string replace plugin, so it has a lot of the same options. You specify an XPath, you say what attributes you're looking for. Um, and again, it has a search and replace, but the search and replace, um, I guess the replace string has this special token mapped ID that gets replaced with whatever is in, whatever is captured in the search string. So yes, that was my five minute warning, so I should go quickly through these. Um, so we need more process plugins. Um, there's already contrib module, the migrate media handler, um, that looks for file or image fields in, in, in Drupal 7 sites and creates Drupal 8 media entities. And, um, and this has already been updated to use um, the DOM structure that, that Marco and I created. Um, we have a meta issue um, which lists a couple of things. Um, maybe you want to handle non-attribute strings in DOM string replace. Um, maybe instead of replacing HTML elements, you just want to delete them. Um, that's something that can almost be done by the apply styles plugin, but can't quite. Um, and your next project, the next time you're doing migration, Think about how it can be reused, how to make it a little bit configurable. So instead of just hard coding everything in, into your custom process plugin, write a plugin that's configurable that can be reused the next time. And then maybe you can contribute it too, so that so that other people can benefit from from your work. Um, we might not want to use libxml. Um, when we first started working on this, um, Mike Ryan who was, along with, with, with Moshe Weitzman, wrote the first 
couple of versions of, of the Migrate API in Drupal 6 and 7, I think. Maybe they went back to Drupal 5? Um, he said that his go-to for HTML parsing has been the query path library, and it's especially good with uh, old-school HTML where they don't bother to close their paragraph tags and stuff. Um, so may maybe we should make this more configurable, let people choose which parser they're using. Um, everything I've talked about for the Migrate API has been in, in the process section, the transform section. Um, we might want to do something similar in source plugins, and, and we don't yet have a framework to do that. Maybe we should. Um, and, and maybe these plugins should have a way of declaring, I'm taking a string and returning an object. Um, and so maybe, maybe we should extend process plugins to use core type data API. Um, maybe we should be using the HTML5 parser that, um, from, from Mastermind's HTML5. I think that's one of the standard uh, composer dependencies of Drupal 8. Um, so not much to say in conclusion. I have a list of the links that I've given in the talk, and I guess I'll, that's more interesting to leave up than the bare word questions, but whatever time I have left, further questions? Yes? Will you speak, <coughs> will you speak briefly about uh, DOM parsing, parsing using the CSS selector? Can, can I talk about DOM parsing using the CSS selector? Um, no, I can't. Um, I, I guess I've heard that um, Drupal does include something that uh, converts CSS selectors to XPath selectors. Um, can anyone else answer that? Um, XPath allows for CSS in the, uh, the standard for XPath, so you could probably just put in the dot notation and, and use okay. CSS styles for, for fine things. Okay, so this is something I didn't know. Someone says that um, XPath by itself allows the use of CSS selectors. So, also, so maybe it's just easy, yeah. In all reality, they're still attributes. So they, they're going by different acronyms, but you can still treat it like the href and call it by class or ID and basically do the same thing. It should still match it as, as well. Right, whether it's XML or HTML, as, as someone points out, they, they are still attributes, they are still following the same syntax. And, and I think all the, the examples I, I gave there um, refer to attributes, and, uh, and yeah. For some reason, I'm thinking of an actual CSS selector method in um, DOM parsing, like XPath CSS selector. I've, I've heard of this, I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking. Okay, there, so, so there, 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 there might be something like that, a, um, a, a CSS selector option when, when doing DOM parsing, but off the top of my head, can't help. Okay. Other questions? Okay, well, we're at time. Thank you. And, and go start using these plugins. Yeah.